I gotta admit, today's title makes me feel a tad uneasy. I've spent more than enough time on the internet to know exactly what happens when you ship a young girl off to some distant planet largely populated by slime creatures. In today's humble opinion, we're sucking and blowing our way through Slime Rancher. The tone of this review is going to be a little different, mostly because it's going to focus on one critically flawed piece of Slime Rancher and how that singular aspect ruined an otherwise strong title. The reason for focusing on this flaw is because it's a potential detriment to the medium as a whole, and since I'm passionate about games, I want developers to learn from this so they can continue producing high quality content without getting bogged down by backwards thinking. Now don't get me wrong, Monomi Park has done an excellent job at truly crafting an experience that captures the player's sense of wonder. The world is lively and encourages the player to explore and discover all sorts of hidden surprises, while the mechanics though simplistic and non-threatening, are intuitive and fluid enough to facilitate said exploration and discovery in a fun manner. You can lose yourself for hours fully appreciating the nuances of this game, and I did, which is precisely why I want to emphasize why certain decisions had such a horrendous end result. This is mostly going to have to do with the story, so spoiler alert if you want to play through the game for yourself and then come back later. Let me walk you through my experience. Slime Rancher is a game where you spend about 25% of your time tending to your slimes, feeding them, collecting their shit, and selling said shit on a market for practical and or aesthetic upgrades for your character and or ranch. The other 75% of the time is dedicated to roaming the map, exploring a varied landscape full of beautiful environments, and discovering a few secrets and oddities along the way. You'll invest hours cultivating your farm, collecting resources, and solving mysteries, each one deepening your sense of curiosity. Where is this going? Where does it lead? The places you explore become less tangible and more abstract as you progress. Each open door begs the question for what lies beyond the next. It all culminates at one final location where you come to understand that you're on the brink of a monumental scientific breakthrough, as in traveling through a device that transcends space and time to uncover secrets that no other mortal has ever before seen. Your eyes will be the first to set their gaze upon knowledge unknown. Sounds pretty epic, right? Sign me right the fuck up for whatever hype train leads there. The game's been building this up since you walked out into the barren outcroppings of the ranch, constantly leading you along with increasingly piqued interest. And here you are, on the precipice of understanding, your curiosity appropriately percolated and titillated. What the absolute fuck lies in wait on the other side of this portal? How the hell should I know? The portal doesn't even open. And with that, we reach data point number one, the first and lesser questionable decision that contributes to the game's undermining itself. The two completely and uninteresting optional side stories that you may not have even been paying attention to for the entirety of the game override your own personal story. You want to know what lies behind the veil? Too fucking bad, kiddo, because we're going to inject some shoehorned romance into the mix. Now to avoid being redundant, before I explain why the stories are subpar, I want to introduce you to a few other data points that fully flesh out my irritation because they all kind Kind of meld together here. First, a question. Do you see anything wrong with this protagonist picture? Really think about it. Anything wrong with this particular portrayal of a protagonist? Give it a few seconds. No? None whatsoever? That's because there fucking isn't one. Wow, I bet a couple of you thought that maybe I was going to say it was because she was a girl, or perhaps because she's black, or maybe because she's got aquamarine hair. You know why you thought that? Because I fucking led you to think that it might be a possibility by drawing your attention to it. Allow me to explain. As I played the game, I paid these details no mind. I think the character design is cute and fits well with the aesthetic of the game. However, when we get to the ending of the story, we get a glimpse of Casey, the person who's been messaging the protagonist Beatrix through the entirety of the game. And I mean, since our girl B doesn't ever reply to Casey's impassioned, bleeding heart sappiness, I can only postulate that B is actually short for Biatch because she's always leaving them on red. But more to the point, Casey is left intentionally gender ambiguous. To unpack why this is an issue, let's go back to the idea that drawing people's attention to something, be it intentional or unintentional, increase that something's importance. For me personally, I saw Casey and thought to myself, wow, they kept me from exploring the nature of the cosmos to push this social justice bullshit all over my face, which made me re-examine Beatrix, who was no longer just a cute mascot, but a belittling, condescending, smug commentary on political correctness. Let me pause here to say that I don't believe that this was the developer's specific intention. In fact, I'm usually of the opinion that things like this are spurned from the desire to make people feel seen and represented, which is a good thing to want to be, but there's a right way and a wrong way to go about it. Imagine if I started out a video like this. Yo, 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 what it is, what it do, it's your boy Jay Batty with another review, and he coming at you and all the black people too, because everybody's equal, especially black people. 
Granted, my example is more obvious, but the principle is the same. By drawing attention to something specific, you make it the focal point and isolate it from everything else, which creates the feeling that is the opposite of inclusive. Or to articulate more clearly, the very act of being inclusive is counterintuitively not at all inclusive. But don't worry, this happens way more often than you might think to game developers. Though I'm not sure why when people want to be inclusive they go straight for a black woman. Maybe they're trying to find the furthest thing from a white man. Kudos on nixing the afro and hoop earrings, but you fell for the old black girl with blue hair trope. Now I've got three different suggestions for how this could have been handled significantly better. Way number one, completely dedicate the game to being about the player. In a forum post regarding Casey's gender, one of the devs said that Casey was meant to represent someone the player might have known in their life, which was the declared intent for leaving their gender ambiguous. The problem is that it takes one insignificant trait and emphasizes it by making it the only thing that's ambiguous. We know every superficial detail about Beatrix and we know all of Casey's traits except gender. What is the significance of any of that? From what I can gather from the post and the idea of inclusivity, it shouldn't be significant. You could capitalize on the fact that the game takes place from the first person perspective and completely eliminate the character model, get rid of all the insignificant details so the player can fill in the blanks with their own imagination and make the characters whatever they need them to be to relate to the story. Way number two, treat the characters like people instead of avatars. I don't personally care whether Casey is a boy or a girl. I mean, sure, I think that making her a lesbian would just add to the idea that you're trying way too hard to avoid looking like a team of white guys, but at least if you commit to a creative decision, you won't end up having people missing the important parts of your game over silly, trivial nonsense. As it stands, the characters just serve as an uncomfortably specific avatar when juxtaposed with your inclusive philosophy. Beatrix is a black pseudo-lesbian with blue hair. Those aside from Plucky are all that we know about her, and they mean absolutely nothing, which looks bad on you. You made a black-skinned, blue-haired, semi-lesbian that has no character development or personality to speak of, which means that she's not a relatable person. You emphasize the desire to create a relatable experience, and then you essentially say that the superficial traits that define a person's preferences or appearance are what make them relatable. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, characters are relatable because of what they stand for, how they behave, what they believe in, what they think. It's empathy. It's connecting with someone on an emotional, thought-provoking level. If people are so shallow that they need someone that looks like them or has their romantic preferences to relate specifically to their situation, I think they might be so dead empathetically that they'll never be able to enjoy a good story ever again anyway. When I get chills watching All Might smash the ever-loving fuck out of Nomu, it's not because he's a big buff white guy, it's because he's the symbol of peace that he's willing to sacrifice everything in the name of protecting the innocent. I don't admire his smile, I admire the reason behind his smile. Compare that to Beatrix Laboo. Where the fuck is the depth? Flesh them out, solidify their identity, give them motivations, purposes, and depth. Have a goal and an intent. How powerful would your message have been if you had really made a person connect with Beatrix, relate to the unseen romantic interest, root for their relationship, invest themselves in its success, and then revealed that it was a girl all along. That the entire time they were unaware and empathizing with a same-sex love. Now, it may have been a little more controversial among players, but it would have undeniably provided evidence that it's not an issue here because, frankly, it never should be in Slime Rancher or in real life. 3. Nix the story all to fucking together. I made the first two suggestions first because I wanted to emphasize the potential paths for an actual story out of respect for your creative visions, but I honestly just do not give a fuck about them. You had the perfect game of whimsy, immersion, and mechanics. All I wanted was to enjoy the game for what it was and enjoy the beauty of the world that you wove, and specifically to experience the satisfying conclusion of the massive buildup. Where the fuck does this portal lead? We already have the professor backing down in the name of love, we don't really need Beatrix to do it too, could you not isolate it into one story and have us like foil our experience with the professors or something other than this nonsense? I really just want to know. Think about it, if you sap all of the narrative meaning out of the game, so too does character design lose its meaning. Beatrix just goes to being a cute character in a cute game without the one of death, just like Mario, Bomberman, or Mr. Driller. It could, hear me out, okay? It could just be a fun game. Slime Rancher is normally sold on the Steam store for the price of $19.99, though it has been on sale for as low as $13.39, which is the price that I would recommend. 
Personally, I'd say that it feels closer to a $15 game than a $20 game, but I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up that it's still actively being updated at this time. That doesn't change the fact that the mechanics are great, and if you're willing to overlook the disappointing ending, the journey itself might be worth a look. Slime Rancher is a testament to Monomi Park's ability to create a fun and engaging title, though it might not hit home with some of the hardcore crowd that would prefer CSGO or Dark Souls. Gamers that enjoy a more laid-back or varied approach, however, would find its charm hard to resist. Unfortunately, I have to give Slime Rancher a 5 out of 10 for using that charm to betray me with disappointment. I just came here to have a good time and honestly, I'm feeling so attacked right now. Thank you guys for watching and thank you Monomi Park for devoting your time and energy to making Slime Rancher. I was surprised by the creativity and diversity behind the slimes and their behaviors. Just throw some of that creative energy towards the characters next time. It was a blast to play and I hope that I was able to offer you something insightful to make it and your next ventures even stronger, more consistent, and even more amazing. Stay awesome everyone.